up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. 55 seconds left in the penalty, a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time. Boston 4, Montreal 3. Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into Lemaire, back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> you know, I, 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 there is a bomb! Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle, une passe devant. Et c'est la bonne chose de faire des points, ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Donc, Stanley pour les Canadiens, le 23 e de l'histoire. You found the dogs! John, you found the dogs! He found the dogs! And all together, they worked a young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. 8.6 beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. It's going to be sick. Marinero, the sick podcast. Oh, I just noticed having a real, real bad hair day today. What do you want? I just got out of the spa a little while ago. Uh, yeah, let me hide all this stuff here. Uh, it is Monday, December the 5th. It is uh, three minutes past 10 o'clock. The Montreal Canadiens are visiting the Canucks in Vancouver. And the puck will drop in just over 30 minutes' time. And we look forward to that. And when the Canadians, the puck does drop between the Canadians and the Canucks, basically it's going to be a watch party is what it's going to be. And I'm going to be here and I'm going to be commenting what I'm seeing on TV. I did it last game uh, when the Canadians were in Calgary on Thursday night. And I'm doing it tonight. And I'm going to do it tomorrow again when the Canadians are going to be visiting the Kraken in Seattle. Why not? I mean, uh, I'm not going to change the time of the show. We decided this year that we we're going to go on at 10 p.m. live or right after the Canadians game. Sometimes we went a few minutes after. Come to think of it now, I think we're going to go on at 10 p.m. Eastern pretty much all the time, Monday to Friday. The Sick Podcast that you're watching right now on YouTube Live, on Twitter Live, and our Facebook Live as well is brought to you in part by three very special companies, Energy Transportation Group, an asset-based 3PL provider offering outstanding service at incredible rates, Selling all North, uh, serving all North America, pardon me. Energy Transportation Group offers full service logistics support. And these guys at 8.6 beer, intense by nature. I went with the uh, India Pale tonight, which is the 7.0. It's actually cold out of the fridge, and I might just uh, crack it open there. <clears throat> uh, the beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark. And brought to you by La Cash Restaurant. If the last time you went to La Cash, was when the Habs won the Cup. It's time you go back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. It was just three weeks ago, three weeks ago today, that Roberto Luongo from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. It must be cool. I'll never know what it feels like. Obviously, he does. Let's find out. He joins us right now. He is special advisor to the general manager with the Florida Panthers. Roberto, how are you? Good, Tony. How are you doing? Very, very good. Thanks for doing this. I spoke to your buddy, Maxim Lapierre, early on. He says he's going to be very serious early on, but maybe, maybe you might just find a way to get to him. He said, ask him about those famous ping pong games we used to have in Vancouver. So he told me it would be a good way of breaking the ice. Rob, talk to me about those ping pong games. I totally, I totally dominate him every single game. So I don't know. I'm surprised he told you to mention it because uh, he, I don't think you've ever, he's ever beat me. The Twins, on the other hand, that's a different story. Oh, really? Hey, they're good? Yeah. Any Swede is a master at ping pong. So we had the Swede, uh, we had the Twins, we had uh, Samuelson on our team. Couldn't beat them ever. So me and Burr had some good matches, uh, but uh, the, the, uh, the Swedes dominated that the ping pong table. Speaking of which, how did it feel like for you uh, being inducted alongside Daniel and Henrik Sedin and Daniel Offertson just three weeks ago? It was amazing. Um, it was a great weekend. It wasn't just the Monday night. I think uh, the weekend as a whole was fantastic. I really had a lot of fun in the Legends game. Uh, that was probably my favorite part of the weekend, uh, just to be on the ice with with those guys, but also ex-teammates uh, from that uh, Vancouver team that were there as well. Uh, Corey Schneider, Kevin Bieksa, Dan Hamuse, those guys. Um, 
as, as well as like legends like Eric Lindros and John McLaren. So it was, uh, it was pretty fun uh, to be on the ice with those guys, especially that I was playing forward. I got Rob, to play a ship with the legend of boom too. Yeah. Pretty cool. Rob, I, I, I watched it obviously as did all hockey fans. It was uh, very, very, it's always very touching when the inductees get to go up and they get to thank a lot of people that, uh, uh, they wanted to thank, you know, for their entire career. And then they do it right there on that stage. It's pretty cool. It was particularly emotional, I thought, when you talked about your brothers, Fabio and Leo, who both wanted to play in the NHL themselves. You can tell that Fabio was really, really emotional. Uh, so he's the one who cries the easiest in the family, I guess, huh? I, th- I would think so. He started crying on the video. I didn't even go on stage yet. He was already crying. So <laughs> I heard he said people were giving him a tough time in Montreal about that one. He's not... <laughs> <laughs> he's having some troubles from when the cameras was on him the whole speech seemed like rob take me back to montreal i know you talked about those famous games in the basement that you guys had and breaking up all the walls in the home but i would imagine you know those are very very great memories for you yeah they're awesome you know it is you know we have dinner at the, the table everybody together and then right after that, we all go downstairs and we start playing. You know, we set it up, tournaments, blah, blah, blah. We'd argue all the time, of course, you know, uh, some tears, some fighting. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, those are the memories you remember. Um, you know, those are those are the moments that when you get older, you wish sometimes you could go back to and, and, and relive again because, uh, you know, that's what that's what makes you, right? These, those moments with the family and, and spending that time together and, um, you know, especially playing hockey like uh, like we did all the time, uh, you know, and given where, you know, I ended up, I think it was uh, something that really stuck in my mind, especially uh, when I was up there making my speech, it was really something that I wanted to bring to the forefront because it was an important time in my life Yeah, and my brothers were a big part of it. Were, uh, did you play a lot of ball hockey growing up, Rob? Because, like, I never had a chance to play ice hockey. So my thing used to be we used to play in these pickup ball hockey leagues or whatever. Uh, did you play a lot of ball hockey growing up, yes or no? I played street hockey with my with my neighbors when I was a kid. That's kind of where I started, uh, you know, like five, six years old. And, and we used to play street hockey. And everybody in my neighborhood was older than me. So I was the youngest one, which is kind of good because I used to play against older kids. And Yeah. Uh, you know, for the first three, four years, that's all I did is, is play street hockey. And then finally, when I was eight years old, my parents, uh, finally gave in and, and, and signed me up for hockey on, on the ice. So when you were playing street hockey goalie, I guess, or not? Oh yeah. Yeah. I had yeah. the, uh, the, the couch, I cut out the couch with the, the string and I tied it around my pan and my legs and yeah. I had a hockey glove with another piece of foam on top as a blocker and then a, and a baseball catcher. And uh, that's, that was my goalie gear. Some of the young generation has no idea where we're talking about, Rob, but I, I know, know we do. Yeah. Amazing. We yeah. used to, those old sofas, we used to open up the zipper. We used to take out that beige foam that came in yeah. it. We used to take two, drill two holes or not drill them or take a, a screwdriver or something pointy, point yeah. it right through, make the two holes, take a rope, tie the pads around us. Uh, those were the good old days. The and bottom, then, At the bottom, you have to cut a little, like a little arch for the foot. Yeah, the bottom yeah. Of the pad, you know? yeah, 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 you're right about that. You're right about that. Who were you when you were playing in nets and you were playing street hockey? Uh, were you anyone in particular as a goalie? Uh, most of the time it was Grant Fior. I mean, that's why that's why I became a goalie in the first place. You just uh, just watching him, you know, just spectacular saves all the time. It was like yeah. dramatic and, you know, it was just it was fun to watch. And then uh the the Oilers were my favorite team back then you know uh, obviously the glory days with Gretzky and Messi and those guys and Grant Fuhrer was my favorite goalie so I mean I just just drawn to the position right away when I was watching that you know as much as it was easy to be Grant Fuhrer because you knew you had goal support right your team would score you at least four goals even on a bad night they were all offense I mean and some of their best defensemen were all offense as well I mean this guy faced a lot of breakaways and two-on-ones and three-on-twos not that easy being Grant Fuhrer after all no, it's not. And, and like you said, I mean, at the end of the day, all you need is one big save at the end of the game. And it's yeah. like he can always come up with it. And that's what made him so great. You know, it wasn't uh, that he had good numbers or, you know, he was like technical, but he always came up with a huge save when he needed it at the end of the game. And the rest, you know, the, the guys took care of the rest. Rob, once again, you know, thanks for accepting the invitation. I, I thought that because the Canadians were playing the Canucks tonight, uh, the timing would have been great. I thought it was very, very appropriate. Uh, so I know everyone that's watching really, really appreciates it. And, you know, most of them follow you on Twitter, of course. But I have to ask you, I think you said this before, Strombone comes from where exactly? It's just uh, 
uh, well, it's, it's a couple of different things. I can't uh, divulge everything, but uh, when I was in high school, my first year of high school, um, I played the trombone. Okay. And uh, I was a big fan of stromboli. So kind of combined the two a little bit there. And then, you know, okay. we uh, it was a word that we started using in, in, our, friend, in our group of friends. And then yeah. I just I, I kind of accidentally used it once as a uh, – and then it kind of stuck, right? And then I was stuck with it. I didn't want to change it because that's how people started recognizing me as. That's pretty cool. Uh, I want to, listen, I want to go back to pretty much where it all started. And that's why I went back to your youth. And I want to talk to you about the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Three seasons with Val d'Or, one season with Acadie Bathurst. Val d'Or, let's start with them. Your greatest memory. Uh, well, it was three and a half seasons and then half a season with Bathurst. But okay. uh, with Valdor, uh, obviously, we won the championship the one year. Uh, we had an unbelievable team, uh, J.P. Dumont, Steve Bijan. Uh We were loaded. And uh, I remember we won. We went to the Mem Cup. Uh, we didn't we didn't win in the Mem Cup. But uh, I just remember the buzz in the city was unbelievable. Like, uh, I don't think they'd ever won a championship before. So it was uh, it's pretty special to be, you know, in those small towns like that, that's all they have, right? Yeah, so uh, yeah. being part of that was, was pretty fun. <clears throat> Out of all the players I covered in hockey, Steve Bejan, I thought was one of the nicest guys. Yeah, he's awesome. He's a really yeah. funny guy. I think I remember him. I think he was our captain back then. And, um, you know, he was always joking around and keeping the mood light for the guys. And uh, he, he felt like a, a guy that was maybe like in the mid-20s. He didn't, didn't look like a guy that was 18, 19 years old playing for a junior team. Yeah. Akadi Bathurst, who coached you there? Uh, geez, I don't remember. <laughs> I think it was the, uh, you might have to help me out with this one. I think it was the, uh, no, I don't remember. Well, I, I'm asking you because I went on hockey DB. I didn't yeah. see myself, but was my buddy Dino Mazzanotti part of that, part of that staff by any chance or who? No, he was not. I don't, that name does not ring a bell. No, so I'm, no, I'm, sure. I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to figure it out myself. Akadi Bathurst, because I know that I want to, I want to say he had to be a man, but I'm not sure. Okay, because I know that uh, that uh, it was Richard Martel with uh, that was with Valdor. Valdor, yes, that was Valdor, and I was yeah. just trying to figure out Akadi Bathurst, and I couldn't figure it out. Anyway, maybe we're going to have somebody that's actually going to be on watching us uh, live on on YouTube right now, on Facebook or on Twitter, who could probably refresh our memory. Uh, yeah. Getting old sucks, Rob. You know, we tend to forget <laughs> things. You know, as they say, I don't remember night. anything. I I can remember any save that I made or a goal that I let in. But ask me about coaches and teammates. I don't remember anybody. La vecchia brut, as they say, Rob. Your '97 <laughs> yeah. draft. You go fourth overall. Thornton, Marlowe, Jokin, and go before you. You're there at the draft. You're sitting. You're thinking what? What's going through your mind? Well, originally there was some rumors that I might be going to Boston at one. So I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. Um, so could you imagine if I would have went to Boston at one? Wow. <laughs> I would have changed things a little bit, right? Uh, but uh, so obviously my name doesn't get called <laughs> in the first couple. And then um, when we got to the Islanders, I, I had spoken to them the day before. Uh, and they had back-to-back -back picks. So yeah. I I didn't know for sure. Obviously, I was going there, but uh, you know, there was a good. Uh, I had a good good talk with them, so there was always the, the possibility. And and like I said, back to back picks. I thought maybe there was a chance. And uh, you know, when you hear your name, it feels like the rest of the day is kind of a blur, right? I, yeah. I see the video all the time of me getting up and kissing my mom and dad and all that, but I don't even remember doing it. So it was yeah. just so fast, and I just remember the stress before, and then as soon as your name is called, it's like everything just lets go, you know. Yeah, I know players usually say that they don't have a preference. Yeah. I mean, Eric Lindros did, but I mean, that's another story. But <laughs> did you have a preference? No, I, no, I didn't care. I just wanted to be in the NHL, you know, and that was yeah. my dream. So um, I didn't, it didn't matter to me. Um, I was happy with, with whatever team, and uh, it didn't even really matter, you know, how early I went. I just wanted to get drafted and just know who I went to, right? That was, I just wanted yeah. to know who I belonged to. Uh, if all goes well, we got another 15 minutes here. So obviously I can't go through your 20 year career because I'm going to be out of time. Yeah. So I'm going to skip to the good stuff. Okay. How many times? As long as we talking? skip the bad stuff, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're skipping the bad stuff. Don't worry about it. I'm going to pump your tires, the entire conversation. Right, Don't worry. You know, perfect. he didn't, Thomas didn't want to pump them, but I'll pump them for you. Okay. All right. Well, now that it's over, we can pump them a little bit. No. Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> 2007. How often do people talk to you about the semifinal? uh and uh the overtime and you're in the you're you're in oh, the locker the room, bathroom, and, the bathroom and, you, break. And, and you got to go to the bathroom yeah that was a tough one 
<laughs> it was weird because because my stomach ache started in the third period, you know, and I was like, ah, wow, wow, that's weird. Because usually during the game, like once you're in the game, you don't you don't think about that, right? It yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. But for some reason in the third period, I was like, wow, what's going on here? Um, you know, I started feeling a little funky. And then I could have just went to the bathroom when I went in the dressing room after the third, but I didn't. I was like, no, nah, it's going to go away. And as I was putting my gloves on to get ready to go out with, with uh, like four or five minutes left on the clock, uh, I was like, man, I don't think I'm going to make it. Uh, so um, I called the, one of the trainers over. I said, listen, I said, can you ask the ref if they can wait two minutes to start the period? <laughs> like, like, this is not going to happen here. Yeah. So he runs over. I think it was Wes McCauley. Yeah. Uh, so he runs over to the ref, comes back. He's like, yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. They'll wait for you. I was like, okay, good. So I run in there, take my stuff off, just my top. And um, as I'm on the uh, – doing my business all of a sudden i hear the play i hear the play i was like what and i freaked out i was like dude this is over if we we had scored on the season's over we're like we were facing elimination so i freaked out like i literally don't even remember if i wiped or not put my stuff back on and then like and then i got to the bench and then the play went on for like another two three minutes before the whistle and we couldn't get it out of a zone like danny saber and me like three unbelievable saves and I'm yeah like, and all I, all I can think of, if they score here, I, I'm going to feel so like so bad for the kid. Like, you know, it doesn't deserve it. But he he, yeah. he, he, all, he made the big saves, and, and, and then I came in, and we lost in the next. <laughs> <laughs> what a story. That's unbelievable. But I have to ask you, Rob, was it something you ate or was it nerves? I don't think it was nerves because, I mean, I'm always nervous during the game, and that never happened before, right? So it's, yeah, it's okay. not like – so you and I are wired differently then, because when I'm nervous, I got to go to the bathroom, Rob. Well, so do I. So do yeah. I. But usually yeah. I go before the game, and then I'm good, yeah. right? I'm good the rest of the way. So, but this time for some reason, like it never happens, like because the way when I played, I was nervous before the game. Like before the game, I really was nervous. I go, I go to the bathroom like four or five times a day on game day before the game. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Yeah, and then once the game starts, I'm good, and 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 then like the nerves kind of go away, and like you're in the zone and you're playing, so you don't even think about it. And for some reason, something happened. So I must have been something probably that I ate. Uh, so all kidding aside, did you find yourself, all kidding aside now, when it was game day, did you find yourself actually eating less because you knew that you were always nervous on game day? Uh, was this always something that you, know, that you had to deal with throughout your career, no matter at which level? Or was it once you got to the National Hockey League that once it's game day, I'm nervous and I'm going to the bathroom four or five times a day? I mean, I don't remember. I don't remember what my routine was when I was in junior, but I could remember yeah. that you know that was pretty much my routine every game um, in the NHL. Even even in preseason, like it didn't yeah. matter to me. Like in preseason or playoffs, I still was still nervous. That's just the way I prepared and yeah. that's the way I got ready. So um, I had my I had it down to a science. Like it was every, at the same time every day, and then and I yeah. I ate normal. I mean, I would have breakfast, and I had a big lunch, you know, the pasta with the chicken for yeah. a pregame meal, and then a snack before. So it was just something that was part of my routine, really. Yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, by no means am I an athlete, uh, so I don't know what that feels like. But I, you know, I I do deal with it doing podcasts. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, you know this is never far. It's always. Are you so, sitting on a toilet right now, or just uh, a seat? No, I'm actually sitting on a seat. There's my uh, autographed Gila Fleur chair, by I the see, way. I saw that. Uh, yeah, with my uh, yeah, uh, Cole Caulfield pillow, by the way. Yeah, here you go. We'll put it there. Do you sleep with that, or no? I don't. But he could very well be the next 50 goal scorer. The last yeah. one was Stefan Riche in the early 90s. My bathroom is about 10 feet away. I'm actually in my basement right now, but. So once again, Rob, all kidding aside, I mean, I didn't expect to talk about this for as much as I am, but as your career went on, were there certain things that you actually tried to help alleviate the nerves? I mean, is there anything like the, you know, meditation, yoga, anything like that or whatever, or no? No, man, that's just, that's just the yeah. way I was wired. And I felt yeah. like the nerves helped me, you know, be on, be on top of my game. Right. I, I felt yeah. like sometimes if I wasn't nervous, it was a bad sign. So, um, and like I said, it was more like preparing for the game because once the game yeah. started, then I was fine. I wasn't nervous. And then I was in the zone. You know what I'm saying? Well, so yeah. It, was, yeah. it almost became like a a preparation slash like when I wasn't nervous, I was like kind of worried. I was like, wow, why why am I not <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was uh speaking kind of, of nervous, was. I mean the entire country was nervous back in 2010. It's the Olympics, it's actually being played in Vancouver. You're playing versus Team USA in the final. I think it's Zach Parisi who scores with like less than 25 seconds left in the game to tie it up. 
Sidney Crosby ends up scoring the golden goal for Canada, I think just less than five minutes into the extra frame, four-on-four four hockey. Can you begin to explain to me what it felt like to play in a game like that? And what was the first thing you thought about when Crosby scored? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I've never experienced uh, that much intensity, uh, like just everything from from the like the whole tournament. First of all, not just the final. It was like, especially when I found out that I, had, you know, uh, Babs was switching from Marty to myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, changed the, the way I was uh, approaching the whole thing because, um, you know, now obviously you're you're driving the bus and then and, and you know you have uh, you feel like the whole country's you know not only myself but you know our whole team. Mm -hmm. I want to deliver for the country, so I yeah. uh, changed and uh, didn't get much sleep that that uh, week and a half. I tell you that. Uh, and then um, just leading up to the final, I think I was happy that this. They, I think it was a noon game on the final uh, because they had the closing ceremonies after. So it was, it was a good thing that we just got up and went to the rink. Like there was not a lot of waiting around and sitting on it and just you know the nerves and all that stuff. So we we got up, we went to the at breakfast, went to the rink, and we played. Um, I remember um, after they tied it, uh, it was very deflating, uh, not only for myself, but you could feel it, uh, you know, on the bench. Um, uh -huh. I think it, was, it was a huge uh, bonus for us that we got a chance to go in the locker room after the, the third period. If, if the overtime uh -huh. would have started right away, I think we might have still been reeling. Uh -huh. So uh, we, we were able to um, regroup a little bit. You know, a couple guys spoke, blah, blah, blah. We, we regrouped and we got ready to go up back who out spoke, there. So. Who spoke, Rob? Who spoke? Uh, there was two guys mostly. I think it was Rob Nieder, uh, sorry, Scott Niedermeyer and uh, Chris Pronger. You know, oh. it was mostly um, guys. You know, we're in the gold medal game overtime. Like this is what you dream of as a kid. You know, somebody's going to be the hero in here. Like, let's enjoy this moment. Blah blah blah. You know, so that that kind of stuff, right? And I think it kind yeah. of settled everybody down and shifted our focus to overtime instead of like, wow, we had just lost. Not lost, but we, you know, we we gave it away with a minute left. So yeah, uh, I think that was huge for us to be able to go back in the locker room there. Um, yeah, and We're then we came out, and then you know when we scored, all if you if you see the overhead shot of me after they scored, yeah. I don't even take a stride all the way to the other end. I just put my both my arms up in the air, and I'm looking at the ceiling the whole way down the ice because yeah. I was like, oh my god, like, I couldn't believe that it was actually we had got it done, and it was, I was I was thanking the Lord, and you know that yeah. we. we it was crazy. Uh, probably from tears of joy to tears of sadness one year yeah. later, Rob, in 2011. But, you know, the Canadians got to the Stanley Cup final, uh, surprised everyone a couple of years ago. And we heard after losing to Tampa Bay just how difficult it was, obviously, for everybody. But Carey Price and, in particular, Shea Weber, who figured he had played his last NHL game, were completely devastated. Um, how long did it take you to get over being so close, but yet being so far because you lose in game seven in front of your fans. Is, is it something that took a while, Rob, or was it just, you know, you have well, no it depends. Choice. It depends on which level, right? Like some, some of me is still not over it, you know, because I, wow. I never got a chance to win it. Right. Like that wow. was my only yeah. chance and we didn't get the job done. So some of a small part of me is still not over it, but another part of me, you know, uh, dealt with it in the summertime and got back the next year and, and, you know, put it behind me. And then, you know, as I, as the years went on, you kind of like, you know, it's part of who you are. And obviously, you know, even though we lost, it was a great run and it was, it was fun, right. It was a fun run. Um, so there's different levels to it. I think um, mm -hmm. for me, uh, you know, given that I'm, if I would have won a cup afterwards, I think it would have been, you know, easier to, to the digest. Um, yeah. So given that we didn't and that never even got close to going back to the final, uh, so you know that that part's still tough to to swallow. That was their only chance, and we came so yeah. close to it, and we fell short. So, Rob, I'm gonna put you on the spot a couple of times, but it won't be that bad. Okay, you're a big right. boy; you can take it. So I'm gonna ask you a question, and I know what the easy answer is, but I don't want the easy answer or the political answer. I want the honest answer, which I know you're gonna give me. Would you have wanted to play in Montreal? Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. And I, I kind of went back and forth on it, uh, to be honest with you, uh, over my career. I mean, I never, you know, sought out to go play for the Montreal Canadiens, but you know, there was a period of time when, uh, you know, when I was, uh, the trade was in limbo, you know, I didn't know 
what my options were, but um, part of me did and part of me didn't, to be honest with you. I think, uh, you know, part of me did because uh, that's where I'm from and, you know, you, you get to be home and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the other part of me, you know, was like, well, you know, if I do play there, then it's going to be tough for everybody else, you know, in the city because yeah. you know, everybody's going to be, you know, you know how it is, you know, when you're, when you're a celebrity in, in the city. So, well, I don't um, know how it is, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, part of me did, part of me didn't. I mean, I, I guess that's kind of like everything else. I don't know if that's the kind of answer you wanted. but It's that's funny. It's funny that's because I was texting with your brother yesterday and he said, and I said to him, I said, you're a legend. And he wrote back to me, he said, no, you're a legend. And I said, no. You were mentioned in a Hall of Fame speech. I never was. <laughs> You're a legend. But I know that you've you've talked about this before. That you do come back to Montreal in the offseason. Yeah. And, you know, obviously everybody recognizes you. And they ask you for a picture. Just look at this. This is coming from your Twitter account. There you go. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of my favorites when you put on Twitter. When you were telling your wife, babe, when I go back to Montreal, everyone recognizes me. <laughs> Someone approaches. Can, <laughs> can we take a picture? They had you the camera. <laughs> there you go. That was a good one. That was a, I wish they were all like that. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you get the feeling that they knew who you were? No. No, no, they had no idea. That's why. That's why uh, they asked me to. Take yeah, the yeah, they had, they had no idea. They had no, no. idea. Not even after you took the picture, they approach you and say, "Hey, are you?" A, no, no. Uh, yeah. Not at all. Not at all. I, I, uh, but to the, I wonder if somebody eventually told them. That would be the best part, right? Oh, that would, that be, would be that would be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Special. I, I don't think they were from Montreal. No, they I, don't. They don't look like they were in the yeah. picture because they 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 just. Had, I think they had some. Uh, you know, the way they were dressed, or they had some yeah, gear on them. Yeah, they were like tourists. I think they felt yeah. like tourists. Yeah, they looked like tourists to me. Hey, uh, speaking of pictures, here's one with someone who's a pretty popular guy in Montreal right now. Not him, but a couple of guys. There you go. Look who you got your arms around there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Marty St. Louis, huh? Beautiful. Uh, how, sur can you, how surprised were you when you heard that Marty St. Louis was brought in as interim coach last year when the Canadians relieved Dominic Ducharme of his duties. When you heard that name, did you say, "Is this true?" Or, or well, did you I, say, uh, I, "I was shocked figured. because I didn't know. I didn't even know he was coaching. Like I didn't even. I didn't even know what he was up to. Like, and yeah. So yeah, I was. I was very shocked. But um, you know, part of me kind of was intrigued, if that made sense, just because yeah. I know what type of guy that he is. Uh, so I'm happy to see that he's having some success. I mean, that's, that's good for him. I mean, that's, that's not an easy thing to do to come in with yeah. no experience basically and, and be the coach of the most historic franchise in the NHL. That's, it's pretty impressive. Right. You like, you can tell talking with him, like he, he loves the game, but there's loving the game and there's like really, really loving the game. Yeah. Like he really loves the game. Like he, no, he lo loves it. No, he loves it, and, and yeah. the crazy part is, is like he's gonna keep getting better, right? Because <laughs> he's getting all this experience. So yeah, I mean, I'm really impressed by the job that he's done so far, and then you know, yeah, Montreal's been playing really well this year. I mean, they're 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 in the playoff race right now, so that's Rob. They're they're fun to watch. They're entertaining. Yeah. You know, it's Suzuki's scoring goals and picking up points. The same for Caulfield. They're a lot of fun. Let's talk about your job, special advisor to the GM with the Florida Panthers. Can you paint a picture for what uh, a typical day like uh, looks like for you? Well, I'm, I'm also the uh, – I run the uh, goalie excellence department. So, um, yeah. I would say my, my work is kind of split half and half uh, at the moment. So, you know, right now with the goalie department, you know, we, we not only do we take care of our own guys in the NHL, American Hockey League, East Coast Hockey League, our drafted guys, um, possible free agents uh, in Europe, uh, draft picks uh, coming up in the, in the fall, you know, goalies that are eligible for the draft. So that's the kind of stuff that I do with the department. Um, you know, I have people working under me, so we're a team and, and, you know, we, we run meetings and we try to stay on top of things uh, and that side. And then, and then as far as the other part, um, uh, I'm pretty much involved in, in, in everything day to day uh, team, team stuff with, uh, yeah. you know, with Bill he includes me in, in all the, the decisions. Uh, you know, we, we talk about our roster. We talk about, you know, everything from potential trades, waivers, all, all the stuff. So um, it's really uh, opened my eyes to as far as, like, what it takes to be a general manager in the league. And uh, uh -huh. I'm still learning every day. This is already my fourth year in management, if you can believe it. Uh, it's yeah. pretty crazy. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm learning. I'm not having a ton of fun. Um, so, so do you want to be a GM one day, Rob, or do you actually just right now really love what you're like some, some guys or girls, they actually, you know, they don't need to be the general manager. They don't want to, they, they find a job that they think is perfect for them. Is this a perfect job for you or you have higher aspirations? No, I have higher aspirations. I, I do want to be a GM one day, uh, oh, great. but I'm not in a rush to get there. Uh, I think right now my kids are, you know, they're they're uh, teens and they're teens, so they still need their dad a lot, and I, I don't want to be gone all the time. You know, uh, I did that enough when I was playing, so uh, I'm kind of learning, but at the same time, uh, you know, I'm not in a rush to get there. Uh, when I do get there, hopefully one day, uh, I want to be ready. You know, I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to go in like doubting that I'm ready or not. I want to know that I'm ready, and I want to be uh, do a good job. Rob, I won't keep you for much longer, maybe one or two more here, but uh, seeing as you told me you want to be a general manager one day, I mean, what did you learn in the interview process with the Canadians when they were looking for a GM? I think it's well documented that you interviewed Rob. How many times did you interview and what did you learn? Oh, just just the one time. Uh, it was my first time, so I... <laughs> And I, you know, I, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, it was, you know, it was the, it was already a year ago. Was it a year ago already? Or? Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, I went in cold, uh, you know, I spoke to a, pe a couple of people in, 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 uh, in our office back here, gave me a couple of tips, but I didn't really know how it would go or, you know, whatnot. So I just spoke from the heart and, um, there's a, there's a couple of things that, you know, I, I felt that I could have been better at describing maybe like, you know, my views on scouting and that kind of stuff. But um, in general, I, you know, the philosophy I think is, is, you know, what, what matters. And, and, and uh, I'm happy to see that, you know, the philosophy that I had is lining up a lot with what they've been doing so far. So uh, pretty cool. Yeah. So it's, so, uh, it's made me feel a little bit better about the interview. So we know that you're the type who gets pretty nervous on game day, but once the game starts, you're okay. Did you get nervous that day? Yeah, no, I was pretty nervous that day just because, I mean, that's pretty big. It's a pretty big deal, you know? It's uh, So uh, it's funny. I always say uh, nowadays is like when I played, I was nervous before the game. And then once yeah. the game started, I was fine. It's like now it's the opposite. I'm like good during the day. But once the game starts, now I'm nervous because I can't control anything. I'm just watching. Yeah. So uh, How long that day, yeah, I was, the nerves were pretty high. I mean, it was a pretty big deal, uh, you know, for me to, to, to do even interview for that, that position. So, uh, yeah. I was happy I did it, and I was happy that uh, Montreal gave me the opportunity. Uh, and, and and you know it's uh, it's going to be good for me the next next time the interview rolls around. At least I'll know a little bit more what to expect. How long was that chat? I want to say it was about an hour ish, okay. more or less, maybe a little bit over an hour. Uh, a great experience, though, right? Because like you said, the next time that you're going to interview, like you've you broke the ice, basically. Yeah, no, it was a great experience, and uh, I, I thank them, uh, you know, a gazillion times. I think uh, because. You know that, that was I think that was only my third year in management. So to, yeah. to get an interview for a GM job was was pretty big uh, big deal for me. Rob, before I asked you, I said, did you ever want to play for the Canadians? And you said, well, sometimes I think yes, sometimes I think no. And you yeah. you know, there's positives, there's negatives. Could you imagine? Like, I think about this sometime, but let's be honest, the most stressful position probably in all of hockey has to be being the goalie for the Montreal Canadiens with Patrick Waugh having played here and Jacques Plante having played here and Ken Dryden having played here and obviously the list goes on and on. Carey Price did it for over 15 years. Could you imagine? Like that's... I can't imagine because they played in Vancouver for eight. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I know exactly how he's feeling. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you know, you're in the spotlight every night, no matter what you do, you know, whether it's good or bad, you're going to be in the spotlight. So um, I understand, I 100% understand what he went through. Uh, and it's not easy. Sometimes, you know, it's tough uh, when things are not going well. And, you know, it's like uh, people are piling on, the media's piling on. It's, 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 you have to be strong to be able to like put that behind you and go play a hockey game, you know, because goalies is 90% is mental. Like everything is mental. If you feel good in your head, you'll have a good game. If you don't feel good and you doubt yourself, it's going to, it's going to be a bad night. It's just the way it goes. So um, to be able to do that for so long, I mean, that's impressive by him. Uh, and he, you know, he, he came through, he almost, he almost won a Stanley cup with the, uh, with a team that, you know, surprised a lot of people. They never thought that, you know, they could, you know, move past Iran and never mind go to the final. Yeah. So inducted into the hockey hall of fame, you were three weeks ago, the Canucks have already announced you're going to be in the ring of honor 
next year. Uh, a lot of talk in, in Vancouver, out of Vancouver. I talked to one of my buddies today is will the Canucks retire Roberto Luongo's jersey? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you'd love for it to happen, but uh, I don't know if I should put you on the spot here and ask you if you think you should have your jersey retired, but you know, what the hell? I'll ask you anyway. You think you should have your jersey? I think they should retire your jersey. I mean, you're the all-time leader in many categories for the Vancouver Canucks, and we know it's a difficult market, and we know you were there for eight years, and we know that you set a lot of milestones there. Your best hockey was played in Vancouver. I think so. What does Roberto Luongo think? Well, like I said the, the morning of the press conference, that's really not up to me to decide. You know, I, I, I played my eight years there. I had a good time. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I did the best that I could. I, I laid it all out there. There were some bumps in the road and, and you know, maybe, uh, you know, things didn't end the way uh, everybody wanted to. So uh, maybe that might be, you know, one of the factors deciding. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, to be honest with you, uh, I'm happy. Uh, you know, Grand yeah. of Honor is still an unbelievable honor. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to, you know, next year, whenever, whenever that is, you know, be able to enjoy that. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to bring my family up for that and, you know, enjoy with the fans. It's when, yeah. you, when you go to the, when you go to the arena there in Vancouver, you know, you look up, you see the jerseys, but at the same time, you always look at around on the, on the round, you see all the, and I hope they put me next to Alex Burroughs because he was my stallmate, uh, you know, when I played for them. So it'd be nice to be yeah, next yeah. to him up there. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, listen, Rob, I, I not only cheer for good players, but I also cheer for good people. And I've had a chance to meet you on a couple of occasions. Once upon a time, I actually emceed your golf tournament, which took place in Montreal. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be the president of the retiring Roberto Luongo's jersey in Vancouver <laughs> for several reasons. But one of which is you gave me two Vancouver Canucks T-shirts back then. Yeah. Uh, for both my boys and you autographed both of them so i'm figuring if you get your jersey retired it's It'll going up in value rob <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> as long as we split the profits we're good <laughs> rob once again uh i know you get asked to do a ton of interviews and a ton of podcasts and you can't say yes to everyone so please know how much i really appreciate this thank you again no my pleasure thank okay. you okay all the best to you and your family have a good night Rob. Ciao. all right Ciao. there you have it roberto luongo huh and it's uh, on that note, it's uh, the Canadians and the Vancouver Canucks. A shout out to MatrixHomeFitness.ca, uh, a uh, club quality workout in the comfort of your own home, of course. There you have it. Bring it home. Discover the workout in the comfort of your home. Visit MatrixHomeFitness.ca, whether it's for treadmills, whether it's for ellipticals, whether it's for bikes, whether it's for some of their fitness equipment. They are absolutely fantastic. We are going to get to some of your calls a little bit later on, and we're going to give you a World Cup report as well. Go for gold. Without further ado, it's the Canadians and the Vancouver Canucks. They just started about 10 seconds ago. Here we go. Uh, Aniello and Sammy back at Master Control. Can you bring up the uh, the lineup, please? The Canadians lineup. Do you have it? Of course he has it. Suzuki with Doc on his right and Caulfield on his left. Monaghan in between Anderson on his right and Slavkovsky on his left. Dvorak centers Armia on his right. Dadanov on his left. And Jake Evans centers the fourth line with Pitlick on his right and Pozzetta on his left. On defense, Matheson, Kovacevic, Edmondson, Gouley, Jackye, and Harris. And in goal, Samuel Montembeau. For those who missed it earlier today, injured are David Savard and Brendan Gallagher. And here we go. Here is our watch party. And um, let's get to it. All right. Okay. The Canadians uh, with the puck in the Vancouver zone. They try to get it at the net. It's blocked. And here's a good job by Kirby Doc, who gets the puck to Suzuki. Back to Doc. It's picked off. And the Vancouver Canucks go back the other way. They're on a three-on-two. Here's a pass. Here's a shot. Montembeau with the save. And another shot. And Montembeau, I don't know if it got to him, but Suzuki is able to get it out. Oh, he tries to find Cole Caulfield, who would have been on a one-on-one, -on -one, but it's just a little bit too far for him. And the Montreal Canadiens are called for icing. All right. Thanks, Tony. Great interview. Says Luc Lafortune. Thank you, Luc. Um, man, there's a game tonight, says uh, Enforcer. Yes, I'm aware of that. Slavkovsky's on the third line. All right, okay. Excellent reporting, Tony. Not afraid to ask the tough questions. This is coming in from Gary Faber. Thank you. I bet Horvat scores first, says Tony S. For the Habs, I'm going with Josh Anderson. Tony, what do you think of Slav since he's been on the second? Uh, I like Slaff on the second a lot more than I like him on the fourth. I'll say that. All right. Uh, there's uh, Caden Gooley, who I thought looked pretty good versus the Edmonton Orders the other night. And uh, he tries to throw it in. And here we go. 
Here are the Canucks breaking out of the zone. I hope we see a wide open hockey game tonight. You know, I like goals. It's a lot more exciting too when you're doing kind of like a uh, Habs watch party and you see goals. Oh, oh, Jordan Harris got his pocket picked there. It looked like he was trying to come out of the zone all uh, all nice and easy, but no, there was somebody behind them. But Arbor Jack guy knocks the guy off the puck. He's able to get it out. Canadians are a lot tougher team to play against when Jack guy's in the lineup, man. I'll tell you that right now. Tony, what's your take on Carey Price not knowing about December 6th and um, the Polytechnic? Unfortunately, I, I just think uh, that a lot of... Um, Athletes just don't know enough about Montreal. And um, I think maybe that's some of the things that the Canadians should look at is when uh, players get drafted here, when players get acquired, when players get signed, that uh, maybe a few people tell them a little bit more <clears throat> about the history of Montreal and some very important matters. It just seems that they don't know all that many. And, and by the way, um, I'm convinced that Carey Price is telling the truth when he says that he did not know about Polytechnic when he posted what he posted on Instagram. Um, but I, you know, I understand Carrie's trying to stand up for something he believes in. But, um, you know, anytime you talk about guns, <clears throat> whether for hunting or not, uh, it's a very controversial, touchy subject. And I think he should have stayed away from it. And I think the Montreal Canadiens would have loved for him to stay away from it. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, you know, standing up for something he believes in, that's fine and dandy, but I, I think he put the Canadians in a tough spot. Uh, they had to come out with basically, you know, uh, a letter today, uh, basically, uh, you know, apologizing and saying that they're going to make a donation to a very, very good cause. And so good for them. I think the Canadians corrected something. But um, once again, I'm sure that Carrie didn't know, but I think Carrie just should have avoided the post. But what can I tell you? Carrie is, uh, you know, he's uh, he's a little bit different. All right, okay, the Canucks. Now that we tackled that, they're in the zone. There we go. JT Miller tried to get a shot off, but uh, Dadanov hooked him and basically got a you know a stick on his stick and uh, stopped him from doing so. Puck comes out. Armia tries to find Dadanov. It goes off the boards. Dadanov chasing it. The puck's in the Vancouver zone right now, and the Canadians have the forecheck. Dadanov's able to recover a puck. As a matter of fact, it looks like it goes to Dadanov to to Dvorak, it goes back to the point. There's a shot that stopped, and the rebound comes out. And here's JT Miller. Agnello, if you can, can you bring up the Vancouver Canucks lineup? Think you have it? He should. He probably does not. Okay. If he's not bringing it up, well, then he doesn't have it. No, he doesn't have the Canucks. Okay, no problem. I just saw, I just sent me a note. He doesn't have it right now. We'll get to it uh, probably in about a minute or two here if we can. I'm just struggling because uh, I misplaced my glasses. I'm not going to lie to you. I misplaced my glasses and I can't find them. And I'm a little, little rattled by the fact that I misplaced my glasses. They're just showing the replay of a couple of stops that Montembeau made in close, as a matter of fact. Pretty good. Pretty good uh, stops. What do I do? I, uh, I crack this open or what? Let's go for it. A little bit of beer, a little bit of water tonight. Why not? Wouldn't be a Habs uh, watch party without some beer. This is the uh, 7.0, by the way. 7.0. Oh, I like it. Very good. I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not much of a beer drinker, but uh, this is good. If it wasn't. I wouldn't take two sips. So this is the 8.6. It's the India Pale, and this is the uh, 7.0. All right. Canadians get the puck out of the zone. It's now Vancouver with the puck in their zone. And it's Oliver ekman Larson that tries to bank it off the boards. It goes back, and Moltambo has a stick on it. He passes to Arbor Jackai. He finds Jordan Harris. Harris with a pass over the blue line. That looks like that went to Slavkowski, whose pass was actually picked off. It's back to Moltambo, to Jordan Harris. To Slav, well, was that, uh, here we go. Oh, there's a lead pass for uh, Josh Anderson. A little bit too far, and the Canucks get it out of the zone. There we go. Am I uh, ahead of others, or, or are we good here? Uh, we have the lineup. I'm not so sure if they have the lineup. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, we'll get to that a little bit later. Kovacevic dumps it into the zone. Uh 
Is it 8-0 shot? Oh, here we have the uh, Canucks lineup. Look at that. Horvat with Miller on his right and Hoglander on his left. It's Elias Pettersson with Besser on his right and Mikhaev on his left. It's uh, Drys with Garland and Kuzmenko. And it's uh, Iman with uh, Lazar and Studnika. It's Hughes and Schwen. Uh, and Shen, pardon me. It's Ekman Larson and Bear. It's Stillman and uh, Myers. And um, I have to tell you that uh, uh, Besser's a guy that I really want to talk about. And the reason why I want to talk about him is that Elliot Friedman, uh, Elliot Friedman, pardon me, of, of 32 Thoughts and, uh, and Sportsnet, was uh, brought him up and that, uh, you know, his agent has been given the green light to try and shop his client to see if he can find the fit. When the agents do that, when a team asks an agent, hey, try and find the fit for your client, it's because they've asked around and they can't really find the trade to be made. And that's when they ask the agents to see if they can actually facilitate one. Besser for me is, is, is very, very interesting because, look, even though I'm all for the rebuild, okay, even though I'm all for the rebuild, and you would think that because I'm all for the rebuild, I wouldn't want a Besser on the Canadians because if they acquire a Besser and he helps them pick up a few points and maybe win a few games, then it's actually going to hurt the rebuild and it's probably going to hurt where they're gonna, probably going to end up drafting. But Besser for me, man, I think is a, is a, is a, is a, a situation that Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon should pay an awful lot of attention to, okay? Why? Well, the reason why they should pay a lot of attention to a guy like Besser is Besser's 25, okay? He's been in the league for six and a half years. His teammates love the guy. There's not a bad word coming out of Vancouver about this guy. He's a character guy. He's a good team player. He's a guy who's a former first-round draft pick, drafted 23rd overall. He's a guy who's had a season of 29 goals, a season of 26 goals, and two seasons of 23 goals. He's a right-handed shot. He's a winger. He can score goals. How many players do you know in the last six years in the National Hockey League scored 29, 26, 23, and 23? It's not an easy thing to do. But after this year, he's got two years left on his contract at $6.65 million. It's a lot of money. And the thing is, is that the Canucks view him as a one-dimensional kind of player. A guy basically who's a goal scorer, whose production has dropped over the last couple of years, whose production at five on five has dropped. He can score on the power play. He's a guy who usually sets up in front of the goalie. He used to be more of a perimeter player and shoot from the perimeter. Now he sets up in front of the goalie. He's a net front presence. Uh, he's able to uh, tap on pucks. He's able to shoot pucks. And without further ado, we'll talk about shooting. This guy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There we go. Cool. One nothing. Shots were 9-3 to three Vancouver. Or were they 9-2? to two? And then Caulfield gets a shot on goal. And there's something about goal scorers. Isn't this fitting that I'm talking about Brock Besser and his ability to score goals? And the first guy to score tonight is the best pure goal scorer the Montreal Canadiens have and the best pure goal scorer the Canadiens have had since Stefan Riche. Yeah, since Stefan Riche. Jordan Harris with a pass to Cole Caulfield, and he one-times it. Bang. Short side, but that shot is so fast and is so hard. Bravo, Cole. There you go. Cole Caulfield. On the Canadians' third shot of the night, they're outshot 9-3. They were outshot 9-2 up until that point. Just uh, less than eight minutes into the hockey game. And Cole Caulfield gets the Canadians on the board. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Listen up here. Goal scorers. That shot that Cole Caulfield took, it, it wasn't even in the corner. It went off the goalie. But I bet you, like, if another player on the Canadians takes that shot, it's probably stopped. It's just that goal scorers... Once a goal scorer, always a goal scorer, pretty much. It's just their shots, man. They go in with more regularity than others, and that's why they're goal scorers. I mean, Besser has this. Besser has an ability to score goals. And, I mean, once again, I'm not saying absolutely yes because I understand the predicament that is the rebuild. Oh, there was a shot that went right off the goalie there. It almost looked at that puck at eyes. But 
You know, but at the end of the year, if the Canadians aren't able to trade them at trade deadline, by the end of the year, you would think, you would think that Jonathan Drouin will be off the books, that Dadanov will be off the books, that possibly Monaghan will be off the books. Next year, oh, we got a fight. It looks like uh, someone rang uh, Slavkovsky's bell and Arbor Jack guy went to his defense. By the way, it just feels like Slavkovsky is on the opposite end of a lot of hits this season. Like, honestly, like it's just, and this is what happens when a player enters the National Hockey League when he probably isn't 100% ready. And uh, look, he's on the bench. It looks like he wants to stay on the bench and he doesn't want to go to the locker room. But uh, he looks like he's a little bit dazed. They're talking in his ear right now. And I don't know if they're asking him about, you know, the concussion test or whatever. I'd love to get the benefit of a replay. But unfortunately, I don't have it because they went to commercial. And if all goes well, when we come back, I'm going to see exactly what happened here. But Slavkowski was on the ice. And, uh, it, it, you know, it looks like, uh, it, it, you know, I have to go back and see the replay, but it looks like you didn't see the hit coming. And, um, you know, maybe that's something to do with being an 18-year-old rookie as well, is like sometimes you you probably don't think the hit is coming when it is, and maybe that comes with a little bit of experience, or maybe that comes with you taking information or looking over your shoulder a little bit off. And mind you, in hockey, it's really hard because, of course, they're on skates and the play just happens so fast. But, man, like it's just... You know, when you're 18 years old and you enter the National Hockey League, you end up getting caught on several occasions. I mean, even one of the guys who was the best of the best to ever play this game, Eric Lindros, would get caught a lot because Lindros was bigger and stronger than pretty much everyone else's entire junior career. And he used to just, you know, just plow through everybody. So he never really exercised the IQ part of his game. He always just relied on his size and his physicality. And probably the same thing for Slavkowski. And Slavkowski looks like he he's has his head down a lot. Galchenyuk, I remember in his first year as an 18-year-old, he got his bell rung pretty badly. There you have it. Slavkowski is going to the locker room. He's got to go through the – there's Graham Brian Bend who's probably saying, hey, bud, we, you know, we got to go through the protocol. Let's go. And, you, you know, your concussion test, and we'll see what happens. That's it. That's what happened. I mean, well, that's what's going to happen, but I still didn't see the way he got hit. It would be nice to get a replay here. Am I the only one who hasn't seen a replay here? Are they showing this replay or what? What's going on here? I would think Arbor Jack I wanted to do a little bit better in his fight, but by all means, it was it was over it was over pretty soon. I bet you they're gonna go again, by the way. Slavkowski should be in Europe all year and AHL next year. There you have it. There's a, a text coming in. No replay here. Anderson can answer the bell. I don't remember when was the last time he did, to tell you the truth. Slav has been hit a few times. Yeah. We need another player to protect the young guns. Jack I can't always be the one. I know. What would you give up for Besser? Well, if they would acquire Besser, I would imagine the Vancouver Canucks would just be willing to give up the contract at this point. I'm telling you right now, you won't have to give up a lot for Besser. You won't. In a cap world, if a team thinks that a player's skill set is dwindling and they're not going to be as productive as they were and they have two more years at 6.65, you know what I like about Besser is he reminds me an awful lot of Tyler Toffoli. You know, and I think he's taken over the spot that the Foley used to have on that power play and, and on that team. And, you know, right-handed shot, and he's not the fastest skater in the world. He's not the quickest, doesn't have the most pace. But if you give him a chance, he can score. And Besser's going to be 26 years old. And, you know, if the Canadians would acquire him in two years or two and a half years from now, the guy's going to be 28. The Canadians traded Tyler Toffoli at 29. They got Tyler Pitlick. They got a first-round pick. 
I think they got another pick. I'm not sure if it was a third or a fourth pick or maybe even a fifth round, but in yellow and Sammy and master control, uh, and they got prospect Emil Heineman. If you can write back what was the second pick, or maybe someone here can refresh my memory, but there was a first round pick. There was Tyler Pitlick. There was Emil Heineman. And the, the other pick was which round exactly for Tyler Toffoli. Anyway, not that it really matters, but if you get four pieces for Toffoli at 29, who's to say that if Brock Besser comes here and starts to find his scoring touch under Marty St. Louis, and I would love Marty St. Louis working with Besser, and I would bet that he would find his scoring touch working with Marty St. Louis, that in two and a half, two years from now, when you know, you're know you up against the deadline and you want to trade him because he's going to be UFA at the end of that year, you know, I bet you that you can you can you can get a pretty good return from. What are we on a four on four now? Yeah. All right. Four on four for 14 seconds. Uh, others coming in. Habs don't need Besser. They need Fantilli. Listen, I, I don't disagree. I agree on that, you know, that they need Fantilli for sure. But, uh, you know, I'm a little bit torn with the, listen, if Besser's struggling, he might not help them win games this year, you know? But ideally, what you want to do is you want to work with Besser so that if he's on your team, you can make him turn it around next year. And then next year, you can start putting together competitive teams after this year. Don't forget, they're going to lose a lot of players come deadline. Not lose them. They're going to trade them. But whether or not they're going to get anything in return is, uh, is uh, me, you know, it's a different story. Besser has 15 points in 19 games. Uh, I don't think they're moving him for nothing. No? then why did they ask his GM to try and facilitate his, uh, his agent to try and facilitate a trade? Because they can't find the taker from. So I'm, um, you know, nothing. I mean, would you characterize a Yoel Armia and a third round pick for nothing? That's not nothing. But in my opinion for Besser, it's almost nothing. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? Galley and joint. Okay, let, let's stop this whole galley and joint to Vancouver. Folks, if the Vancouver Canucks, you know, trade Brock Besser, it's because, you know, they want to take money off of the cap. So they're not going to trade a guy who makes 6.65 so that they can get a guy who makes 6.5 in return and get a guy who makes 5.5. That's not happening. Okay. So if they trade him, the most they would want in return is somebody who makes half his salary. So half or less but then again i mean to get absolute zero contracts back in return be very difficult to do because you know a lot of teams would have a hard time actually fitting 6.65 under the cap type of thing so that would be difficult all right cole caulfield and rem pitlick are talking and pitlick is uh, smiling Cole was probably telling him it's a lot cooler to be here than it is in Laval, no? Yeah, he's probably saying, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Four on four for another five seconds. And here we go. The Canucks are on the power play now for a minute and 23. Elias Pettersson circling back. Quinn Hughes. My God, it's it, it's nice to watch uh, Pettersson and Hughes skate, eh? And dangle with the puck. I mean, those guys, they're 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 poetry in motion. Really? They're unbelievable. JT Miller finds Quinn Hughes, who the Canadians could have drafted, who went seventh, I believe, to Vancouver, but the Canadians took Cock and Yemi at third. And everyone knew it was not a great pick. Even the lady that was in the stands that I could still remember her reaction. But unfortunately, the Montreal Canadians absolutely wanted a centerman. And they weren't worried that uh, Jesperi Kakanyemi was like 15th and 17th on some people's list. That went well. Brady Kachuk went fourth to Ottawa. Quinn Hughes went seventh to Vancouver. And the Canadians got Kakanyemi. Ah, at least he scored a goal against the Toronto Maple Leafs in overtime. Which, uh game six, round one, a couple of years ago, the year they went to the final. They were down three games to one. Suzuki scored the overtime winner in game five. Kakanyemi 
in Toronto, Kakanyemi in game six in Montreal, and then the Canadians went to Toronto and they won game seven in Toronto. Oh, oh, Armia's coming out of the box. Yeah, nothing's going to happen. Oh, there's a stretch pass. Look at that. The Suzuki scores. <laughs> Sandan, <will you? laughs> Armia's not going to score, but Suzuki's going to score. There you have it. There you have it. Suzuki, Caulfield and Suzuki. Who else? Kidotre. Eh? Kidotre. Wrist shot that goes right off the goalie's glove. And I got to tell you, I, I don't think Boudreaux's too happy, man. I don't think Boudreaux's too happy. He's probably saying, couldn't Roberto Longo still be active in the National Hockey League? Could he be playing for the Vancouver Canucks? They're not getting good goaltending tonight, let me tell you. They're not getting good goaltending tonight. They have a ton of shots. Well, they're they're still stuck at nine, actually. But at one point, they were up 9-2 in shots. And the Canadians have come back with four straight shots, two of which have gone in the net. First, Caulfield, now Suzuki. Look at Suzuki. Caulfield's flying, eh? Caulfield's flying. And you know what? I think he just got hooked, and I think the Vancouver Canucks are going to the box. Look at Boudreaux. Boudreaux's like, oh, it's Besser. It's Besser. Rien pour aider sa cause, as they say. Nothing to help his cause. Yeah, that one there is no doubt about it. Caulfield puts the, the puck right under his stick, tries to go by him, interferes with him, penalty. If the Canadians go up 3 nothing. Midway through this period here, the Canucks are pulling the goalie. Past midway through the period. There's seven minutes left in period number one. That was a tripping call. Just over seven minutes to go. Let's see how this power play lines up here. Okay, someone says, give it up with this tanking. Darren, you have your opinion, I have mine. What do you want me to tell you? I'd rather they tank so they can get uh, Fantilli or... Dvorsky or uh, Michkov or uh, Connor Bedard, and you want them to hopefully make the playoffs. And I hope for you that they do. And then if they do and they get eliminated in round one, you're going to wish that they were going to be, they would have tanked. And uh, that's it. But you won't admit it. That, that's fine. You have your opinion. I have yours, bud. I respect yours. I just don't agree with it. Suzuki passes it back. Matheson. Kirby Doc. Back to Suzuki, back to Matheson, back to Suzuki, off his skate. Drop pass to Kirby Doc, shot, looks like it missed. Caulfield, back to Matheson. Canadians power play, Matheson to Cole Caulfield. He winds up, looks like he's going to lose it. Oh, almost picked off. It wasn't. Back to Nick Suzuki. What a pass to Caulfield. Passand on Donnie while you just missed. Wow. Did he fan on that? Because I was I was convinced that he was going to put that in. We've seen that cross-ice pass from Suzuki to Caulfield I don't know how many times. I was convinced that Caulfield was going to put that one in. But it was did he fan on that shot? Because if he's not fanning, he usually scores on those. Matheson finds Caulfield now. Back to Matheson. I bet he's going to go back to Suzuki. I bet he's going to go back to Caulfield. He's trying. He's trying. He's trying. This one's to Kirby Doc. To Suzuki. Oof. Looked like it was a little bit of a bad angle. That one looked oh, like it almost went in, but it didn't. Suzuki's going to try and find Caulfield, but now the Canucks know. They're they're playing a very, very tight box. They got their s sticks on the ice. They're cutting off passing lanes, and they're cutting off that pass to Cole Caulfield. They know that Suzuki is looking for Cole Caulfield. Ah! <laughs> Suzuki throws it in front, deflected by Sean Monahan. The Canadians are up by a score of 3 to nothing. Wow. They are absolutely on fire tonight. Are you kidding me? Less than 15 minutes into the game, they're up by a score of three to nothing as the cameras <laughs> zoom in on the backup goalie. What did I tell you? You got to make a goalie change. Martin's got to come out of there, man. Martin's got to come out. I'm not saying that one's a bad goal because it's not, but it's just a momentum thing at this point, right? You're down three nothing after 15 minutes. You got to make a goalie change, man. What, what's, what's, what's Bruce Boudreaux thinking of? What, what's he, what's he going to do? He's going to wait till after the period so you don't embarrass your goalie? And what if the Canadians score one or two more? Look at Boudreaux. He's looking up at the uh, at the scoreboard. He's saying, oh, my God. Tonight's going to be a long night. 
Yeah, yeah, Bruce, it's going to be a long night. All right. This is good. You know what I like about this 3-0 lead? Well, there's not much that you like when you, it's the rebuild, but when games start a little bit later and they start at 10.30 Eastern, if the Canadians would be down 3-0 right now, every, you know, everyone, like a lot of people would tune out, go to bed. You know what? I got to work tomorrow. Instead, no, they're going to stick with this now. They want to watch their team win. They're up 3-0. This is great. They're going to stay up. They're going to stay up. You know, I'm going to stay up too, by the way even though I got a really, really long day of work tomorrow myself. Maybe not. But there's a lot to do, though, you know? You pick up the phone in the morning at around 8 o'clock in the morning. You go on the radio, BPM Sports, 91.9 on your FM dial in Montreal, and then I make my way to TVS Sport in the afternoon when I'm on with JC again, this time on his television show on, on TVS Sport. So, you know, you're working morning, you're working late afternoon then you come back you're prepping throughout the entire day you come back you get ready for the podcast but this is a lot of fun i love doing this i love doing the radio i love doing the tv i love doing the sick podcast this is a lot of fun oh big hit pizzetta it's about time that the fourth line actually does things that a fourth line should do no pizzetta actually with a hit for energy oh my god there's a goal pizzetta i've seen it all I've seen it all. Even Michael Pizzetta is scoring. Bruce Boudreaux, I told you, you have to take out your goalie. You have to take out your goalie. You have to take out your goalie. I never coached once in the National Hockey League. This guy has coached like 8,000 years, and now he's pulling his goalie. Do you see? Every time I tell you that I'm a step ahead of everyone else, even some coaches in the National Hockey League, some people laugh. They're not laughing now. It's well documented. I did this live. I did it on YouTube live. I said, Boudreaux, you got to pull your goalie. I saw that he was shaky after the first goal. I saw that he was shaky after the second goal. I told him, pull him now after the third goal. He didn't want to listen to me. A fourth pair went in, and now the backup. Uh, oh, my God. But where do you get coaches like this? My jet, fire him immediately. Fire him right now. Do it during a game. Pretend you're Pierre Gauthier trading Mike Camilleri. He did it during an intermission. Or the Canadians firing their goalie coach after the second period. Fire the coach right away, right now. Go down on the bench and fire him. Can you believe this? But does, but you know what? I'm not even going to pretend to be smart here or, or, or say that. Like, it, it's not rocket science. Like, it doesn't take, like, uh, you know, an engineer or whatever it doesn't take someone highly educated to figure out that martin didn't have it tonight even cole caulfield shot as much as it was a one-timer and as much as it was hard he was on the short side but suzuki's goal kind of like hit his glove and kind of like just went right through it i would have pulled him there after the second when he didn't i go okay after the third, now you have to pull him. No, he pulls him out after the fourth. Game over, Bruce. Bruce, the game is over. Bruce, Bruce, the game is over. It's over, Bruce. My God, man. The goalie that's in right now, is it uh, Delia? It's, this is his first appearance of the season. Is that it? Yeah. My God, man. Until you can't make this stuff up. But you can't make this stuff out, this stuff up. You see the way I said that? My God. Mamma mia, get all with you. A couple of uh, the uh, the uh, first period is winding down here. This this game is over, folks. This game is over. There's there's you know what? I don't know what to tell you, but if the Vancouver Canucks come back and win this game after being down 4 nothing, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I'll do pretty much whatever you want me to do. What coaching or lack thereof, man? Is this a joke? Can't believe that. Actually, I could believe that. Sometimes they just want to wait till after the period. I don't want to embarrass the goalie. You end up embarrassing yourself because it's embarrassing that you didn't pull your goalie when everyone in that arena knew he should have been pulled after the second goal. Maximum, the third goal. Maximum. Everyone knew. 
do the na 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 hey hey song. I can't actually play music on YouTube. There's there's copyright and all that stuff. You can't do it, but na 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 hey goodbye. Doesn't quite sound the same when you don't play music. Eh? Hey, if you uh, like what I've been doing with the sick podcast, and uh, if you can like the YouTube post, if you can like it on Twitter, if you can like it on Facebook. What really goes a long way, by the way, is sharing it on Facebook with other people, your friends, other groups. And if you listen to us via Google, Apple, or Spotify, leave us a five-star review. It goes a long way with us. It's our way of feeling the love. And if you want a message or comment, you can just comment sick, S-I-C-K, and it looks like it's happening right now. Uh, Joe Manella says sick. Darren Moran says sick. Um... Aiden Jalbert says sick. I, I hope I'm pronouncing the names correctly, folks. I can't see anything without my glasses. And I misplaced my glasses tonight. I, I you know, you know. I got to go back to everyone's favorite big store tomorrow. And I think they're selling like two pairs for like $25 plus tax or whatever it is. And I'll pick up a couple of pairs. Michael Pizzetta had delivered a big hit before he scored that goal, by the way. Good for him. He had delivered a big hit before he scored that goal. My volume's down here, so uh, no word on Slavkovsky yet, I take it, right? We'll probably find out, um, you know, at the, the start of the second period, we'll have a better idea. Is he back or no? I can't tell here. Dadanov to Armia throws it in front. This is the type of game where Evgeny Dadanov's going to score, by the way, or Yol Armia, one of the two. Dadanov and Armia, they're going to score in a game like this where everything went in. Mind you, this goalie, let's give him a chance. He's not going to be as bad as Martin. But I'm telling you that, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Either Dadanov or Armia is going to score a goal tonight. I would even bet on it. Not saying a lot there, but, you know, put a dollar or two. Do you see that guy just run into, Stillman just run into, Caden Gooley, and he just bounced off him. Gooley's thick, man. He's like a wall. A minute 10 left in period number one. It looked like Dvorak and Armia and uh, Dadanov were on the ice for like the longest time. Look at this. Look at this. Matheson was flying. There's Slavkovsky. He's back. The good news, he doesn't have a concussion. He's back. Mind you, he almost ran at the Monan, I think. This kid's got to keep his head up, man. He's got to keep his head up, man. You know, he's got his bell. He's had his bell rung like three, four times now already this season. You know, it's it's enough now. It's got to stop here. Let's go. Marty St. Louis can breathe easier, huh? Four nothing. Here's Slavkovsky. Keep your head up, son. Yeah, pass it back. Matheson got stripped, mind you. Here we go. Da, 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 da. No. In close, they miss. My God, Vancouver's got nothing right now. They've been stuck at nine shots, I think, for like 10 minutes or something crazy, eh? They haven't had a shot on goal. And like, am I, I believe it was like, they haven't had a shot in like 10 minutes or something. I don't know that for a fact, because when you're doing a show and you're actually watching the game at the same time, there's certain things you don't pick up. You can't concentrate on everything. You know what I mean? But man, there you go. First period over. 4 nothing for the Canadians. 4 nothing On goals by Caulfield, Suzuki, Monaghan, and Michael Pizzetta. Wow. Demolishing. Why don't we take some calls? Hey, eh? you call presented by Playground. Presented by Playground, and the reminding you that um, uh, Playground, your premier gaming destination, located just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal. It is Playground. We'll get to your calls at one triple eight five eight five seven four two five. 
If you try to get a line with me after the games, usually, and it's a little bit tough, well, I can tell you that uh, seeing as this is just over after the first period, I think it's going to be easier, okay? My uh, my hair needs a little bit of water, I think, tonight. Eh? Um, I usually put conditioner and stuff like that, but uh, no, I forgot to put conditioner tonight. Uh, we can get to your questions as well, and we'll get to your calls. We'll get to your questions. And Yellow and Sammy, without further ado, why don't we get to a couple of uh, questions? Tony S., I want Monaghan to stay. I don't even care about the pick anymore. He's the new Dano, but he scores. There you have it. A lot of people agree with Tony, as a matter of fact. I like Sean Monaghan, too. I like him. Oh, and that Toffoli deal that we talked about before, it was uh, they got Tyler Pitlick, which I mentioned. They got Emil Heineman, which I mentioned. They got a first-round draft pick, which I mentioned. And the other draft pick that they got was a fifth round, okay? Uh, so there you have it, fifth round. Um, and I wasn't sure if it was a third or a fifth, but anyway, I thought it was a fifth. It's a fifth. Okay, uh, more comments, more questions. Let's go. Jump on a line. Call me. If we make the playoffs, it's fine because it's our young guys doing it, but I'd rather tank. Yeah, so would I. Let's go. one 585 7425 Jump on a line. Who wants to talk to Marinero right now? Who wants to talk to me? It looks like we have a line, and we're going to JP in Laval. Hey, Tony, what's going on? JP, what's going on? Nah, I'm having a blast tonight, man. What a first period that was. Wow. Unbelievable. And yeah. uh, I know you're pro-rebuild, pro but I'm sorry to say, I think the message in the locker room here going forward is, hey, guys, let's uh, buckle down and let's get, to, let's get into the playoffs. Yeah, no, no, yeah. you don't have to be sorry to say it. I mean, there's a lot of people that want this team. Listen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. If this team was in the playoffs, it would be fun to watch. And for us that you know we cover this team, you want them in the playoffs. Not like you don't want them in the playoffs, but you know, I got sure. I got Bedard, I got Fantilli, I got Michkov, I got them in my dreams, man. JP, I got them in my dreams. <laughs> hopefully, you know, you know, the hope for me is hopefully one of them go to a Canadian team like Ottawa or someone there at the bottom. I don't want them to go to an American team, but we'll see. Yeah, you know you're old and you know you're boring. When the guys you have in your dreams are Bedard, Fantilli, and Michkov. Because I'm going to tell you right now, 30 years ago, it's not Bedard or Fantilli or Michkov that would be in my dreams. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyways, what do you think about this first period play? Everyone's been contributing, but I also think that Vancouver is, uh, is not looking that great tonight. Look, the Canadians had a game versus San Jose a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, remember? Where it was just a really yeah. bad one in the Canadians out of their system. It was they were it was their worst game of the season. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Like I don't remember when was the last time I saw a team play as bad as Vancouver did from like the second half of period number one. They were just terrible. Terrible. Not goalie, not goalie, the only and your your reaction on them not pulling the goalie priceless. Like but come on, but so how many fun. times did I say that this goalie's looking weak so far tonight? I said it after the you're first, like, I said it after the like, second. Yeah, it was hilarious. You're like, you're like, oh my god, when is Boudreau gonna pull the goalie after the fourth? And they actually scored. It was so funny. My God, I, I would have pulled Boudreau, I think. Hey JP, you sound like a good guy to me, man. Thanks for calling. I'll talk to you Thank soon. You. Thanks, Tony. Love All you. All right, there you have it. JP and Laval. What a good guy. Sounds like a really good guy. Let me see if the next person who's gonna call in is gonna sound like a really, really good guy or a good girl. Good man or a good woman. One triple eight five eight five seven four two five. Let's get to your calls. With Caulfield and Slavkowski on the left, and Suzuki and Doc down the middle, should Montreal trade Anderson and Monahan to get young talent at right wing and right-handed defense? It all depends how far along the Canadians are in the rebuild. If they're very, very far along, Monahan could be a guy that you want to keep. If they're not that far along and they still have a ways to go. Well, then Monaghan obviously becomes trade bait. Josh Anderson is not the first guy that you want to trade on this team, but he might be one of the first players that other teams would want because he's going to be under contract still long-term at a number of 5.5, which is, for some, digestible. Agnello, what do we do here? Another call, another comment, or what? What's the story here? Angelo Harkorliakis. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably not. We are three players and another goalie away from getting into the playoffs, and every year there's a Cinderella team. Could it be the Habs? Yeah, it could possibly be the Habs, but maybe not. Maybe not. 
Speaking of Cinderella, what do we do here? Do we go for gold and we do allow everyone to watch period number two? Hey, we're on YouTube live. We're on Twitter live. We're on Facebook live right now. Uh, like it. Message sick, S-I-C-K. Share it with your friends. Tell all your friends about it. Why is everyone against trading Anderson? He's a big body that brings no offense. No, I'm, I'm not against him. I'm not against trading him. I'm just saying that, um, you know, he's probably not the first one that you'd want to trade. Others coming in. If they make the playoffs with this kind of power play, was 14% or whatever it was before the game. Can't wait to see a power play with Leighton Hudson and Sean Farrell. As well as Caulfield, Suzuki, and Slavkowski. That's going to be a good one. Hard to have it both ways with the tanking and the winning. We wouldn't be seeing the progress of our young players, Caulfield, Suzuki, Doc, Gooley, the young guys, just too good. Why don't we do this? Let's go for gold. Go for gold. A daily World Cup report. Alfonso Davies keeps it himself. Presented by Bijou Tree Boston. Oh, yeah, uh, presented by Bijouterie Bassi and uh, my friend Jenny Dioris. Go for Gold is brought to you by Bijouterie Bassi. They provide a professional service and fine jewelry for over 30 years. Visit the store at 9640 Boulevard, St. Michel, in Montreal. They have beautiful stuff, eh? I'm talking 18 karat gold. I'm talking white gold. I'm talking engagement rings. I'm talking diamond rings. I'm talking Ferrari watches. I'm talking Bulova watches. I, I, I'm talking about, uh, you know, um, beautiful necklace like this. It's, it's actually stainless steel, by the way. Uh, pretty cute bracelet like that for men, for women. Um, some real nice earrings for women as well. Uh, I love this place. And I'm loving the World Cup because today, once again, what a game between Japan and Croatia with the winner moving on and the loser, unfortunately, going home. Japan gave Croatia all they could handle. They actually took the lead. Croatia tied it up. It went to extra time. Croatia had to take off some of their best players uh, because they were pretty tired, but it didn't matter. And where it was decided, it went to penalty kicks. And the catalyst was the goalkeeper for Croatia who made three, count them, three saves off of penalty kicks. He was just absolutely outstanding. And they win on penalties. Brazil just annihilated South Korea in an incredible clinic of football. Yoga Bonito is what they call it. They put on a show. They put four in. They win by a score of four to one. And there you have it. Taking a look at our games tomorrow. I believe in yellow and Sammy back at Master Control have them. They do. Tomorrow's game at Qatar World Cup 2022. At 10 a.m., it's Morocco versus Spain. And at 2 p.m., it's Cristiano Ronaldo's Portugal versus Switzerland. Uh, there's still a possibility that Portugal and Ronaldo meet Messi and Argentina in the final. Wouldn't that be something? But there's still a lot of football, or as they call it in North America, soccer to be played for that to happen. So let's just hold on. Speaking of soccer, um, the sale of Ishmael Kone to Watford has been made official. CF Montreal made it official. Watford made it official. And, uh, you know, he joins them starting in January of 2023. Also, it looks like Wilfred Nancy is going to be introduced tomorrow morning by the Columbus crew as their new head coach. And CF Montreal loses their coach, who led them to second in the East last year, just two points out of first and third overall in the league. And CF Montreal president Gabriel Gervais and CF Montreal have invited the media um, to take in his presser tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. So I'm sure tomorrow night we'll give you some reaction to Wilfred Nancy signing with the Columbus crew and hear what and recap what Gabriel Gervais had to say for CF Montreal. The Canadians lead the Vancouver Canucks by a score of four to nothing after one period of play on goals by Caulfield. Suzuki, Monahan, and Michael Pozzetta. Special thanks to Roberto Luongo for joining me tonight for, I would say, probably the first 35 minutes of the show. 
Very much appreciate Roberto's time. Very much appreciate you, my sick army, being here in big numbers the way you are all the time. I bid you a great rest of the game, period number two and period number three. And tomorrow night, same time, same place, it's going to be a 10 p.m. watch party as the Canadians visit the Kraken in Seattle. Tell your friends about it. Say, this guy, Marinaro, well, Marination is running wild. This guy and his podcast, they're pretty sick. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. 8.6. Intense by nature. And La Cage. If the last time you went to La Cage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to La Cage. The menu will surprise you.